guys, what's going on? We got 10 comic book films to rank from 2019. I'm very much excited to go through these 10 because I've quite enjoyed most of them and some of them I haven't so much, but I'm excited to discuss it with you guys. So make sure to comment down below if you guys are new here and you guys just want to in general share what your ranking is of all the comic book films through 2019. And of course, if you're new here as well, hit that like and subscribe button so you never miss out on ranking lists, top 10s, and of course, early movie reviews on a daily basis over here. Thank you guys again so much for clicking on this video. And of course, let's get to it. Coming down at number 10 is going to be Polar, a Netflix comic book property movie starring Mads Mikkelsen. Now, personally, I didn't really care for this one, and I'm going to be even honest. I found the action sequences to be fun, even though it was very much over the top, and Mads Mikkelsen is very fun to watch in the role. It's just, there's something about this movie that just doesn't captivate me enough to keep watching it. Like, I sat there very much excited to watch it, thinking this could be like a John Wick for uh, Netflix, and... It overall just turned out to be just fine. Like, I, I walked out of it going, I'll never watch that again. And I even found myself kind of bored throughout it. And I know this is kind of one of those films where people were either split, like they really liked it or they really didn't. For me, I kind of just walked out going, eh, Polar was, Polar was cool. I like Mads Mikkelsen. Coming in on number nine is going to be Men in Black International or Intentionally Boring, whatever you want to call it. I The more I thought about this movie, the more I dislike it. Now, the biggest pro for me on this part is Tessa Thompson and Kumal Nanjiani's little character, the little alien character. If it wasn't for those two, I honestly would have probably would have been my least favorite comic book film. There's something wrong with the Men in Black International. It just feels lacking of any substance and material that the even the original three men in black films at least had some of that fun aspect to it this one didn't feel like it had a coherent story at all the action was fine there was really nothing that stuck out for this one i just found myself sitting in the seat going what is this like what is this and the more i keep thinking about it like there was one point where i was actually at walmart one day looking at blu-rays and i saw that men in black international came out and i went ew like out loud very loudly and this lady next to me was like what and i said the movie it, it's ew and she just looked at me and gave me a dirty look and then put it in her cart and i was like the movie sucks spend your money on something better and coming up my number eight some people might be like well this movie sucked i i actually got some fun out of it and that is the kitchen now i understand there are a lot of cons to this movie a lot of the story structure some of it seems very rushed but i kind of liked it like for that aspect like it's a nice little throwback comic book film that we would have gotten like 10 or 15 years ago i like melissa mccarthy i like tiffany haddish and i absolutely love elizabeth moss in here i wish she had more to do in here she really didn't. And even though Haddish and McCarthy aren't doing that great with the material, like they're doing good, but they're not like they're just being themselves. I still enjoyed it. I like the story. I like seeing these women come into power of these mobs. And in general, there's something about that that's just fun to watch. And I know I'm very much in the minority on that. It's no means a masterpiece or anything, but I, I like these kind of old throwbacks to those old comic book films, which I know some people thought Polar was like that, and I wish I would have gotten that same feeling from Polar. Coming up at number seven is going to be Dark Phoenix. I actually didn't hate this movie. I, I found it to be lacking and of any depth, and it was a little bit dull here and there. But my God, I, I, I enjoyed some of it. I think the score is fantastic. Like, I love the score in Dark Phoenix. And I even really liked the whole train action sequence. And I think that was actually a reshoot from what I understand. And it was quite fun and entertaining. I wish the rest of the film had that. And honestly, I wish the trailers didn't spoil so much. The movie is very predictable. I didn't really like the ending. Like, it just feels like it goes out on a whimper. Like, for the whole X-Men franchise that we knew and love. And it never hit that same peak that Days of Future Past and First Class hit for this new franchise. Like... Dark Phoenix, I found, was better than Apocalypse, to be honest, but I don't think that's really saying much. I just felt like it was lacking any cool substance to it that maybe the other X-Men films had. Yeah, it has some cool action sequences here and there. There are some nice character moments, and it's great to see every single person in the role. I just watched this, and I'm like, they're rehashing so many different things from other X-Men movies, and it's not better. I mean, number number six is going to be Captain Marvel. Now, I'm in the minority. I found this one to be a little bit fun. I like Brie Larson in the role, and I think everything that works in this movie is surprisingly everything that happens on Earth. Anything that goes into space is kind of when it loses me in that part, um, especially within the first act and the third act. Kind of got a feeling of a 
a low budget halo movie for some reason in the first act the second act everything that kind of goes into earth and her relationship that she has with samuel jackson kind of rises and elevates the movie to its material i just wish they didn't erase her mind i think that's my one thing because she just came off like uh, a bitch and that's not I, I don't mind that like i like different characters and different superheroes being like that but sometimes a certain character she was coming off this way and i'm like you shouldn't be coming off like that i get from her character's perspective and i still love brie larson in the role i like when she starts developing more into the role as the movie goes on i started feeling a little bit more for her as a more character progression comes through i just wish those flashbacks weren't a thing and there are a couple other things that happened with goose the cat which i didn't mind but i I wish they didn't have those elements because it felt a little bit predictable. Again, Captain Marvel's not a bad movie. I like it. The action's fun. The world's cool. I think this is going to kind of have a Thor kind of effect to it, where the first two Thors didn't really work for me, but Ragnarok worked a little bit better for me. But in general, I, I'm still not the biggest Thor fan, unless he's teamed up with people. Captain Marvel, same thing in here. I don't like her by herself, but when she was teamed up with Samuel Jackson, I loved it. I think in the teen movies, I'm probably going to like her character more, just like with an endgame. And I think with other future movies, we're going to see something like that. Of course, coming in at my number five is going to be Alita Battle Angel. And I know this is a manga. I've never read the manga, but I absolutely fell in love with the world of Alita. This is something that James Cameron does so well. And bringing Robert Rodriguez's direction style in here worked. It was a brutal action sequences. And while I still really much hate, I mean hate the relationship in here and yes i know it's from the comics and everything i just don't think it works at all i think it could have been completely wiped out there's zero chemistry in that whole aspect it really dragged the film down and even by the ending of the movie the movie does drag a bit here and there with some of the pacing i still have a lot of fun with alita i love diving into this world and i actually am really fascinated with the character of alita i came to care about her and i hope to god we actually do get a sequel in some way shape or form because i think we do deserve one coming in on my number four is shazam one of the most anticipated films of this year i'm a major fan of zachary levi major fan of david f sandberg and this film did not let me down i laughed i smiled and i had the biggest blast of comic book geekness almost one of the biggest comic book blasts of the year shazam's one of my favorite dc characters and to see him come to life on the screen was one of my favorite things to see all year long i like what they did with the villain in here even though i did think the setup for him was a little bit boring i think some of the powers in there were cool shazam though has left me into the point where i can rewatch this film any time of the day and i really cannot wait till they finally announce a sequel because again the most frustrating thing for me with any single dc movie is when it comes out there's no set plan i don't know if i'm gonna need a sequel i don't know if i'm not this one got a lot of good buzz i'm hoping we do i know we're getting a black adam movie i don't know how much that's gonna tie into the second shazam probably not much i'm i'm feeling if they do shazam 3 that's when they're gonna finally cross them over but zach levi is perfect in the role shazam i'm so happy for him the guy deserves everything and i've still been saying this i think he's gonna get the chris pratt effect from here and start getting cast in a major other movie roles Fingers crossed for him. Before we get to my top three, guys, make sure to comment down below. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this list. Do you guys agree with it? Do you not? Let's discuss it down below in the comments. What is your ranking list of the 10 comic book films from the year 2019? Let's discuss it down below, guys. Thank you guys again so much for clicking on this. Hit that like and subscribe button if you're new here. Comment down below. Head over to Sam Sean Films on how to see films early. And, of course, a big thank you to you for clicking on this video and a big thank you to my Patreon supporters because without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. Coming in on my number three is going to be Avengers Endgame, which a lot of you guys are probably going to shit on me for this. I absolutely loved Avengers Endgame. This has been a really good year for comic book films, but there's something with Endgame for me where I feel like when it comes to the two films above this, that there's something to it that stuck a little bit more personally for me. My thing with Endgame necessarily is that the thing with it is it's just the great conclusion to the whole Infinity Saga. I love Infinity War. I still like Infinity War just a little bit more, but Endgame has that satisfying emotional conclusion by the end of it. And while I still will say I think this, the middle act of this film, everything with the time travel sequence is a little bit lacking for me. It, it wasn't bad by any means. I just, I wanted more from it. And I wish they either didn't spend too much time there or they spent a little bit more time there with each character because I feel like there was enough there. But the first act is incredible. I love the epilogue to Infinity War within that first act. I do like how they structure the film overall. There are some grievances with here and there with like a little like a rat saving Ant-Man and eye rolls in here and there. But I have those in quite a bit of movies. Um, Yeah, I, I have those in a lot of movies per se. I'm sure everyone kind of has their little nitpicks here and there. But the third act is one of the best third acts of any single film I've seen ever. Um, it's one of the most satisfying conclusions to any franchise or saga 
and I absolutely just walked out just totally in love with the ending of this film and that's why Avengers Endgame is my number three. Maybe 3,000 guys. Coming in at my number two, another one you guys probably gonna shit me for, is a Joker. I loved Joaquin Phoenix as Arthur Fleck Joker. I loved Phoenix in this film. I think he's one of the best performances of the year and probably even of this decade. If you do the top 20 list, he's even up there. For me, he's actually the best actor working today. He's a chameleon when it comes to all these roles. Something about Joker, though, for me, is the story felt very predictable. And there are many moments. It's an intriguing film to think about and to watch. But as someone who has grown up with a lot of Scorsese films, I get very much King of Comedy and Taxi Driver isms in there. And that's very much true. And some people won't bother. Some people, they won't even recognize it. But for me, it didn't even bother me. I just felt like I'd seen the movie all this before. But again, it's my number two because of Phoenix. I think Phoenix is in incredible. I've seen the movie four times in theaters, maybe four times, and I've watched it one time at home. I've fallen in love with Joker, and mostly because of Joaquin Phoenix's performance, the score, the cinematography. I've become obsessed. I mean, I even brought, bought a whole damn suit for the Joker. I even practiced his laugh. <laughs> Not that great. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Seriously, the Joker has stuck with me for all these months, but it's because of his performance. I think everything that's great about the movie, it's just I felt like the story was a little bit predictable in that part, which brings me to my number one. And my number one is completely, like my number one is the number one because I'm the biggest Spider-Man fan in the world. He's my favorite superhero and that is Spider-Man Far From Home. Yes, again, there's some eye roll sequences in here, but no comic book film made me walk out of the theater chanting, cheering, and freaking out about it more than Far From Home did. And I mean, Spider-Verse did the same thing for me the year prior, but Far From Home carries my favorite villain from any comic book film, which is Mysterio, which also Joker is my number one uh, for DC. But I love Mysterio. I've been wanting to see him on the big screen. You get Jake Gyllenhaal, my, one of my favorite actors working today playing him. You have Tom Holland portraying Spider-Man again. And you have that relationship with MJ and him finally going about. So many things I relate to inside this movie with the relationship. I'm a little bit younger. I fall in love with all those aspects. Everything that goes into the story, the action, the action set pieces, everything just kind of blew me away about Far From Home. And again, I, I know many people were like, oh, well, I didn't like this. I didn't like that. I don't care. I love Far From Home. It's my favorite comic book film of the year. The more I think about it, the more I enjoy it. I've watched it three times since it came out on 4K. I just can't get enough of this movie. And I just smile. I laugh. I get tears in my eyes. There's just something about this movie that works perfect as an epilogue to the Infinity Saga while at the same time setting us up for the future of the MCU. And that's why I was so passionate about when I heard that he, Spider-Man wasn't going to be in the MCU anymore. I need him in my MCU, guys. And that's going to be it, guys. That is my ranking of every top 10 of all the 10 uh, comic book films from 2019. Thank you guys again so much for clicking on this. If you guys are seriously new, hit that like and subscribe button. Comment down below. I can't wait to talk with you guys down there. But guys, of course, until next time, stay classy.